Today's guest rocked my world in the late 80s with her star turns in Chess, Rags, and Les Miserables. Since then, she's been a singing Disney princess, uh, a three-time Tony-nominated actress, and a wife and mom. Thankfully, she's back on stage singing her heart out in the new yeah. off-Broadway revival of Passion. Please welcome Judy Kuhn. Hi there. Hello. So thank good to see you. Well, thank you for having me. I, I have to just gush first and tell you that <laughs> what's great about doing these interviews is when I get somebody in here who really shaped like why I love Broadway oh. and your voice. I mean, oh, like, thank you. if you knew how, how many times I've, <laughs> I, I mean, like when I first moved to New York, I used to go to the library of performing arts and watch chess. Just and whenever I was bored, I would really? go watch chess and I would go watch rags. <laughs> I mean, it, oh. it's, just, it's crazy. So anyway, thank That's you. That's so nice. Thank you. But you must hear that a lot. I mean, especially working with like <laughs> actors who came after you. you do you get I, this a lot? I do. You know, the gushing the, and the, the, the mixed compliment of, oh, I used to listen to you all the time <laughs> when I was in middle school. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you just kind of have to embrace that, right? Totally. I actually totally embrace that. I yeah. mean, you know. I'm, I'm getting to play amazing parts now, so yeah. I, I, I fully embrace the, where I am right. in my career. I saw you the other day. You're, you are playing uh, Fosca in mm -hmm. Passion. Beautiful performance at the Classic Thank Stage you. Company. Thank you. This is uh, a role you did play like 10 years ago I in did, Washington. I did. I played it 10 years ago um, in, at the Kennedy Center right. when they did the Sondheim celebration, yeah. which was an extraordinary sort of retrospective of Sondheim's work. Yeah. Amazing cast, amazing directors, uh, six full productions that were done in rep, right. um, which is why we didn't do very many performances. Right. Okay. Um, I think we did 15 performances. And it was an odd schedule. You'd do two performances, and then you'd be off for three days, and right, then you'd right. do four performances, right. and be off for five days. Right. And so, um, I mean, the, the wonderful thing is we got to see all the, the shows. Yeah. So um, it was... Camp Sondheim, we called it. It yeah. was really <laughs> a, a fantastic. And you did it with Michael mm -hmm. Cerveris mm -hmm. and Rebecca Luker. Uh huh. Yes. Right. Wonderful. And did you immediately? Yeah. I, I know you've said over the years, like that was a that was a really good one. I would really love to do that again. I, I mean, really, I, did you just I connect? Did, did you connect that. with this? I I connected with this piece in a major way. I it, I think it is a profound piece of writing about the things that. You know, we humans, I think, think about more than anything, mm. which is love mm -hmm. and death <laughs> <laughs> right. um, and beauty and what, be what, it, uh -huh. what does it mean to be beautiful? What is beauty? Um, and especially in the culture we live in now. Right. Um, and I, so I think it's really profound and um, it, there's endless possibilities in it. So as an actor, it's just... It's mm. great to go out there every night and just re-explore it and find new things. And I mean, still after having done it once and having a, again a full, you know, five weeks re of rehearsal, mm -hmm. and now we're into our second week of previews. I'm still hearing things in the words and in the music that I I never heard before. Wow, that's um, Sondheim, right? That's Sondheim, <laughs> and and James Lapine, yeah, who yeah. wrote an extraordinary book. Yeah. So there's Giorgio, now played by Ryan Silverman. Yes. And there's Clara, Melissa Erica. Uh -huh. The show opens, they're having sex. Yes. <laughs> A very bold yes. move. That's how you on start. The part it. of the authors. And we're off. <laughs> <laughs> and they're sort of the, the perfect, I guess, perfect, beautiful lovers. Mm -hmm. And then you come in, you're wailing in a tower or something. Right. Yet, because <laughs> of the brilliance of Sondheim and what he does harmonically in that opening sequence, yeah. he suggests, I mean, he opens a, this piece with a song called Happiness. Right. right. Um, and yet his, his, the, what he does harmonically suggests that maybe everything isn't completely happy or going to be completely right. happy, um, which is, you know, his particular genius. I saw it on Broadway mm -hmm. originally. Of course, the irony of this is Donna Murphy won a Tony originally in right. the Broadway production. It's amazing. Y you're basically the same age as Donna Murphy. I am. And now you're doing it 20 <laughs> years later. It's, it's interesting. Well, that it's funny because Fosca, I think, is a kind of ageless character. Yeah, uh -huh. I mean, I suppose she wouldn't be played by someone in her 70s, but um, I, you know, I, I think because of her illness and yeah. because of what's happened to her in her life, she appears older than she is. Yeah. I, I think this piece needs to be played by actors older than the, what the characters are mm -hmm. because I think you need a certain kind of 
maturity and experience to bring what's needed to them. Yeah. Um, you know, I think the age thing works. What I actually found <laughs> jarring about it is that you're, they're not really uglying you up. I mean, it's, you know what I mean? You're, I mean, like, I remember Donna Murphy had, like, a mole, I think, and she was just very... Right. And, and so, it, to, to me, it, it sort of changed the show in an interesting way. I guess maybe the Broadway production, first of all, I remember that uh, the couple was naked in the beginning. Yes. That so it's almost like uh, more extreme. And then Donna Murphy was m a little more gargly just because of, right. of, of her physical. Right. So uh, is that sort of... Was that talked about at all? Is that sort of what director John Doyle is? Well, I mean, listen, we <laughs> it's a very small theater. Right. So, and, and John is Which is great, is by the very, way, to see a show like this. Yes, I, I think it's intimate, a great yeah. space for this piece because it is a very intimate story. And yeah. for the audience to, to be involved in it in such an intimate way, I think right. is great for the piece and great for the audience. Um, I, you know, because of the the proximity of the audience, we weren't going to do some crazy makeup so that it looked like I'm wearing a lot of makeup. Right. So, you know, we emphasized things like circles under the eyes uh -huh. and, okay. you, know, ma you know, making me a little paler and things like that. But, you know, the whole thing about ugliness and, and, and because of the, uh, the piece and the way it's e explored, I think beauty and ugliness needs to, always needs to be put in context with mm. the, the time. Mm -hmm. What was considered beautiful in the 1860s in Italy isn't right. necessarily what is considered beautiful right. now. Right. Um, and what what kinds of expectations there were uh, for of a woman mm. in that time were also different. I mm -hmm. mean, I think Fosca has an incredible intellect and wit. That wouldn't necessarily be considered attractive then, mm. you know. Mm -hmm. And um, she is, you know, someone who, she, you know, she is depressed and she's isolated and she's lonely and that also becomes a physical has its physical manifestations right. which is also not attractive right. um, so I think there's more elements to what is called ugliness than just physical she's not de a deformed person mm -hmm. <laughs> you know mm -hmm. um, she's just uh, she struggles <laughs> so what's it been like doing it this time is it I mean with all that time in between. Well, it's funny, when you do a role, does it sort of live with you over those years? Do you, do you ever uh, think about it in the years in between? I, I mean, I have thought about this because this is, as I say, a particularly profound experience yeah. to do this. But um, I think, um, you know, there's been enough passage of time that it's, I, I, there's a lot I don't remember. This, this, this space demands a, a different yeah. kind of performance. Um, it, John Doyle is a very different kind of director, yeah. um, and uh, you know we're doing it in this very minimalist way. I mean, we're doing it with ten actors and six chairs, and that's it. Yeah. And some beautiful drapes. Yeah. Um, beautiful drapes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's very, very different experience, and I have felt, you know, that it's. It, to me, it, it's felt like doing something brand new. Mm. Um, I'm sure there are things f from having done it before that still are back there in mm -hmm. the brain cells, but I didn't want to try to recreate anything I did before. Right. So let's let's jump back a little bit. You grew up in Maryland, right? Yes, in a Washington suburb. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Where did this passion <laughs> to, to, to take a play on that? Where did the passion for for being on stage come from? What, what, can you sort of like? Pinpoint where it started. I always, my parents always took me to the theater. I always loved the theater. I would sort of date the getting bitten by the theater bug. Um, to there was a year we spent living in New York, uh -huh. um, and and I was I don't know eleven, ten. I can't remember. Um, and my parents took me, we they took us to the theater a lot that year. What, what stuck, what I really stood out? I remember seeing Man of La Mancha. Okay. I remember seeing You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else? Did, a Fiddler on the Roof. Uh -huh. um, and I just remember it being a transformative experience. I remember having this very odd awareness that I was watching actors um, that, that, that I was aware of the, my suspension of disbelief. Okay. And I was 
I, I was fascinated by the idea that these actors um, and with these sets and costumes could so could create another world so believably and that I could be so moved by it. Mm. And there was some part of me that just thought, felt drawn to that and wanting to be a part of that mm. experience. So. And the first time you got on stage <clears throat> was what? Probably in you know high school plays and musicals. Yeah. <laughs> so you you immediately were singing. Yes. So you, you knew that you knew that you had this amazing voice that rocked well, my world and everybody's world. And <laughs> I don't know about that, <laughs> but I knew that I loved it and people seemed to like uh -huh. my doing that. So. Uh -huh. Do you mm. think that you were um, really driven and ambitious? Because you have such a cool vibe, I, and I, I try to picture like hungry I, Judy Kuhn like fighting the auditions. It's funny, I don't remember sp being driven or ambitious. Uh -huh. I mean, I suppose I must have been to some extent, but I never had that kind of thing of, oh, I have to be on Broadway, I have right. to be. I just Knock wanted the other to, ladies aside, no, here I, I come. I never had any of that. <laughs> I can't picture you doing that. <laughs> I just wanted to be a part of it. I mean, that's what I remember from coming to New York. I wanted to have opportunities. I wanted to, you know, audition, and I wanted to, people to give me work. I, I didn't really even think about Broadway, off-Broadway, mm. or anything like that. I just, um, and, and it wasn't, it was just about wanting to be a part of this thing called theater and mm. telling, and storytelling, and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I, I just, and I was lucky, because, People gave me those opportunities pretty quickly when I came. To well, Yul Brenner came into your life, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you did a tour. I did his last tour, well, a part of that tour of the King and I. I, I was filling in for the Tup Tim understudy for six months while she went on oh. uh, a leave for. I guess she got married or something. Did you go like on as Tup Tim? I never went on. Was there like a an Asian makeup plan <laughs> for your face, well. or how does that work? <laughs> Uh, I, I can't, I don't even want to remember. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did, I was in the ensemble. Okay. So I did oh, you have were to the do some of that makeup. You were a wife? Yes, I was one of the wives. Nice. <laughs> one of the many wives, yes. <laughs> and happily, you got to New York. Yes. And what, Edwin Drood, right, was your first yes, Broadway after, job? Yes, after, well, I, after they said goodbye to me on the road at the King and I, I came back to the city and, um, went to an open call for Edwin Drood. And uh, they were looking for an understudy for both Patty Cohenauer and Betty Buckley. Right. So I, I don't know why they decided to combine those two, <laughs> right. two um, parts for the understudy. So they were looking for someone who could sing soprano and belt. Uh -huh. And um, so I, they. And there you are. And there I was. <laughs> and I somehow figured out how to do that. And did you go on in both parts? I did. Yeah. N not when we were in the park. Once the show transferred okay. to Broadway, I went on. Which one did you prefer? Them. Did you prefer being the diva or the ingenue? Um, you know, I didn't really have a preference. It was all very exciting to go on for both of them because yeah. they were so different, yeah. you know. Yeah. Did you um, see the revival, the current revival? I did. I went Finally to the came opening. Back. It was really great. Really yeah, you fun. enjoyed it? and very, very nostalgic for me. <laughs> yeah, it seems like one of those shows that actors in it just must love. I mean, you just get to sort of it like hang so it up and just have much so much fun yeah, to just do. Yeah, crazy, <laughs> just madness. There, yes, it is madness and lots and lots of fun. So there's these three shows, right? So let's see, we did, it was Rags, Les Mis, Chess. Yes. It was sort of like a triple, really. It was a bit of a whirlwind It was, it was a whirlwind. Me. Do you, do, how do you look back on, okay, first of all, so let's say there's two flops and one of like the most influential musicals in the history right. of <laughs> musicals. Which yeah, is your favorite you of the know, three? Come on, Sophie's Choice. Oh, don't, <laughs> na no, I can't because each one was such an extraordinary, ex I mean, truly extraordinary. And I love all three of them, I should say. Yeah, they were all great. I use great. the word flop. It sounds like a dismissive word, but three no, beautiful they shows. Were, they were all amazing and they all were such incredible opportunities for me. Yeah. I mean, I have to say, Rags, <clears throat> there I was in a room with three of the most legendary writers yeah. for the music theater, Joe Stein, yeah. Charles Strauss, and Stephen Schwartz. Right. So for me, I mean, for a young actor to be with, you know, in a room with yeah. them and, you know, having this incredible material to do, I mean, you know, that title song was in amazing. Thankfully and preserved on the Tony Awards. Yeah, we yes. can watch it. You, well, you yes. actually were you were in Les Mis. That you did you did I, the yes, Les Mis I number was, and the rags. That number. was one of the craziest nights of <laughs> my entire life. Uh, 
and uh, an extraordinary cast. I mean, yeah. starting with Teresa Stratus yeah. um, and Larry Kurt and yeah. Lonnie Price and um, Terry Mann. I mean, yeah. Marsha Lewis. I mean, it just it was just an amazing cast. So, to me, to, to have my first featured role on a Broadway show with around, with those people was, yeah. you know, it was like being in school. Yeah. Um, yes, it was very sad that it did not have a, run, a yeah. run on Broadway, but then it freed me up and <laughs> I was cast in Les Miserables. You know, right. again, there I was in a room with, you know, the uh, artistic director of the Royal Shakespeare Company I know. and um, another extraordinary cast and an amazing piece. Yeah. Um, so, you know. It's so weird that Rags <coughs> has not come back in a proper way. I know a lot of people have tried to do Rags over the years. Well, Maybe you could do Teresa Stratus' role now. I would love to do that. What do you think? Should we do I that? I would love that. I, 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 like do to I like to pretend like I have millions of dollars sometimes and just, let's do that. <laughs> let's do that. Okay, let's do that. <laughs> no, I think it is a ex ex an exceptional score yeah. by Charles Strauss. Yeah. And, and a beautiful story. I mean, one that... that I think still needs to be told. Yeah. You know? So I know you, the Les Mis thing follows you around a lot. In a good way. In a great way. <laughs> you were Cosette, and mm -hmm. you actually, you, and you played Fontaine in the last. Yes. And you were in the dream cast, 10th anniversary yes. of Les Mis, which was, which was a dream cast. Did you run out, do you I, run out to see the movie when it I comes out? I did see the movie. I have to confess, I didn't see it in a movie theater, which I should have, and I feel badly about that. You saw like but an illegal saw, bootleg screening? No, 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 I, I had screeners. Okay, I okay. Because I, I was a, on the SAG nominating committee, so I got all, SAG right. award nominating committee, yeah. so I got all the screeners. So I did watch it at home, but. But that I, might be better because of all the extreme <coughs> close-ups, so it might be better on a TV, <laughs> because I was up their nostrils in the, in the theater. So Perhaps, what it, I don't so know. So it's interesting, it's obviously an Oscar nominated, big hit. What what was your take on it? It's not, it's not sung like the like a dream cast. I mean, it's it's a different right. Well, you know, I think um, I thought it was amazing, and I thought uh, it was I, I, a really hard thing to put on the screen. Yeah. So I, I really admired what they did, right. and I I mean I tried to imagine as an actor what it would have been like to perform those parts for mm -hmm. a camera, mm -hmm. um, given the kind of size of the way it's written, right, and. Um, the size of the characters and mm. all of that. So I, I really admired it a lot. Amanda Seyfried did okay? I think she, she was fine. Are, are you okay <laughs> watching? It's funny, I always wonder this about actors. Is it hard to watch other people do roles that are near to you? No, not at all. Because no? you always go, oh, that's a really interesting choice. Why didn't oh, I think okay. of that? Um, no, I mean, you know, that's the thing that's so wonderful about the theater yeah. is that people are always recreating things, right, you right. know. I, you know, here I am recreating a part that was played right. beautifully right. in its original incarnation. Yeah. But I'm, I, I tr hope and trust in bringing something different to it. Right. And, and that's the wonderful thing about theater right. is it can always be recreated. And, um, you know, it allows an audience to s get a new perspective on, on a piece. When people talk about those three shows that I, that I mentioned, is it annoying to talk about something so, I, when I think about like, if people always ask me about what I was doing in 1988, <laughs> I'd be kind of like, well, I mean, and, and you've done so many great things since then. So is it kind of like, is it a different person? I, I absolutely am a different person and yeah. I approach my work differently, I right. think, and hopefully with more wisdom. <laughs> Um, oh really? But you, yeah, I mean, certainly, I, if I were to go back and do chess again, I would approach it differently. Oh really? I, well, yeah. I mean, I know more now. Huh. I, I hope. I hope right. I'm better at what I do now after all well, these you were, years. You were pretty great then. Well, so I, that's interesting you. to hear you say that, though. So do you think like that you weren't great? Oh, I. Yeah, how could I say how I was? And I've never. You can go to the never, library and watch it. I, well, no, <laughs> no, I would never do that. I didn't see it, so right. I wouldn't know. Right, 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 right. right. And. You have a daughter, a I husband do. and a daughter. I have a husband and a daughter. Um, your daughter is, didn't she just go off to college? She did, just did went that off happen? to college in the fall. Does that blow your mind? That it blows my mind. <laughs> that you've created a college student? Yes, <laughs> it blows my <laughs> mind. Um, but, I, you know, she's fantastic. And How she's, are you holding up? I'm great. Well, uh, thankfully, the theater gods have been very kind to me and have kept me extremely busy right. since the day she went off to right. college. So. I feel very fortunate, and um, so I haven't been sitting home, you know, in her empty room, weeping. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been be, too busy for that. That'd be sad. Um, but she's doing great, yeah. which also makes me very happy. So. Yeah. And she's close, so. And she's a singer. <clears throat> 
Well, not a musical sings, theater singer. She, yes. How did you know? She, I yes, did my research. She, um, yes, she's a beautiful singer. She's an incredible singer. And but interested more in you know pop music and uh -huh. all of that than theater music. So she she doesn't <clears throat> she didn't has she ever had a period where she sat at home on YouTube watching clips of you like I do? I not that I've witnessed. I don't know, <laughs> and I wouldn't ask her. <laughs> I love your albums, by the way. Why, you did a Julie you. Stein album. Why, thank you. And, and you I just I'm in the process of making a I new know, one. I know. I know. You were on Kickstarter. I was. You did a Laura Nero album. I want to yes, get that out. Okay. Which I was listening to this morning. Oh. Love that. <laughs> Uh, you should have you should have both those, but yeah, you and now you you did a successful Kickstarter campaign. I did because and isn't that awesome to, to have this tool now? Kickstarter is remarkable. Yeah, I mean it's, it I mean, really it's changing, is it's really remarkable. changing things. Yeah, it's changing a lot, and um, it's a great tool for artists and and all kinds of you know people who are working on projects. Yeah. to <coughs> raise funds. Yeah, so talk about talk about this music that you've been doing recently. And what's, what, what are we going to see on this CD? Well, and when I do we would, get to hold it? Well, um, I, the release date will be late May, early June. Okay. I would say that this CD is the most personal that I've done. Okay. Um, and it's, it's music from all over the place, you know, from theater music to pop music. You're, blend, um, you're blending. I'm blending. You know, there's some Tom Waits. There's some Joni Mitchell. There's some Stephen Sondheim. Nice. There's some Adam Gettle. Nice. Um, so it's a, a, a mixture of things. Anything and, for passion? Actually, yes, happiness. But oh, nice. Yes. Okay. Uh, yes, we, nice. we did okay. happiness. Mix it up. I always loved that song, so I wanted to do it. But it's sort of a meditation on, on love and happiness and what it means, you know, from my perspective in my life right now. So what brings you happiness, since you said it? So what, what? <laughs> well, <clears throat> I guess I would have to start with my family. Yeah. And uh, doing, and in terms of work, doing work like I'm doing right now, working with amazing artists. When I was thinking about you, I was thinking about all the people you worked with and all the years of working with people and a lot of performers from uh, when you first got your start, a lot of, a lot of performers don't continue to be performers. Right. Uh, we've lost some people, like right. the great David Carroll, who, yes. who I love, your co-star in Chess. Yes. But what drives you now to get on stage and to still want to just sort of put it out there? Well, I mean, really it's just, ha great stories to tell uh -huh. and great uh, people to work with. Uh -huh. I mean, you know, I am truly inspired by the, the people that I'm working with right now, mm -hmm. you know, starting with John Doyle and, well, starting with Stephen Sondheim and James Pine and John Doyle. Um, and it's an amazing story to tell every night. I mean, I, I really me mean that. Yeah. And, you know, to me that makes, you know, it's, that's what we do it for, mm -hmm. right? tell great stories and work with amazing people. So are you used to being around Stephen Sondheim? I mean, he's just a guy, right? <laughs> I mean, he was there, he was in the audience when I saw it. And uh -huh. I think he's, he's been around a lot, right? Yeah, well, you know, I'm so in awe of him, so, you know. This, you still, still is a little bit of like. Of course, you know, it's like, <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm sitting in a room with Stephen Sondheim. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, he, he's been incredibly generous and helpful and, you know, I feel extremely lucky right now in my life. <laughs> I've heard from other people that he gives very specific notes. He does give very specific notes. Like the way you say certain things? Yes, or sing, you know, yeah. I need to hear the T on that word, or wow. I need to, you know, remember. You know, he, he gives very specific notes, and, and they're always incredibly helpful. Right. Well, yeah, you're having a pretty good experience. This is a, this is a pretty uh, a, a game kind of, it, kind of it show you're doing. It absolutely is. It absolutely <laughs> is. So you're at the Classic Stage Company. In previews, yes. you open yes. February 28th, yes. and everyone, uh, everyone needs to come check it out, right? Yes, I've been overwhelmed by the response by the audience. Yeah. I mean, it, it, I, I there's, we hear a lot of sobbing in the house at the <laughs> end, and very beautiful, warm ov ovations, yeah. and it, I, it feels like people are really hearing the story and yeah. really appreciating it. Wonderful. Well, it's great to see you doing a, a full-fledged musical. Well, thank you. Very exciting. I'm looking forward to your album. Thank you so very much. So be on the lookout for that. And uh, thank you so much for coming. It's great to see you. Well, thank you for having me. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Yeah.